Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Mark Kwesi aka The Mad Stuntman and I spoke with him about the classic I like to move it by reel to reel. Uh, Mark is responsible for writing and performing this track so I spoke with him about the story behind this massive classic. Enjoy! The Mad Stuntman is an alias of Mark Kwesi. Mark was born and raised in Trinidad and Tobago. When he was 9 years old, he moved to New York in the USA together with his mom. In the year 1994, Mark had a massive worldwide hit together with DJ producer Eric Morello under the project name Real to Real. Their track I Like to Move It made it into the top 10 of charts all around the world. And even now, more than 25 years after the release, the track is still being used in commercials, TV shows and movies. So a good reason to sit down with Mark to ask him about the story behind I Like To Move It. My first question to him was how old he was when he started to get interested in music. I was 15, 16, around that, that age when I started getting interested in, in singing. Um, reggae music you know I, I was listening to a lot of uh, a lot of reggae artists at the time and that's the groove that I wanted to get into okay. I wanted to be famous yeah so do you remember some of the artists or acts that you listened to uh, a lot back then yes a lot of the acts back then was um, Shabba Ranks Ninja Man um, um, hold on hold on hold on Yellow Man um, Jimmy Cliff, Bob Marley, of course. Yeah. You know, Bob Marley was smooth and, you know, but I like the uh, Peter Metro, th those guys that, you know, chant and they chant and, you know, I like that style. Um, Professor Nuts, uh, Admiral Bailey, a lot of those artists I, I love listening to. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, you're known as the Matt Stuntman. Uh, what, what's the reason you picked that name as your artist name? I picked the Mad Stuntman off of, you remember the Six Million Dollar Man yeah, yeah. with Lee Majors? He also does uh, The Fall Guy. You ever you ever saw the sitcom with The Fall Guy? Sure. Where he does his own stunts in that in that uh, program? Mm -hmm. And uh, and because he does his own stunts and I was like, oh, he's a stuntman. I said, you know what? That's going to be my name, Stuntman. And then my friends would dare me to go talk to a girl across the street. and. I would go, you know, I would not hesitate, I would go. So that's where the mad part came into, mm -hmm. you know, mad not meaning that you're crazy, but it's meaning when you're young and you say you're mad, mad, they, they would dare you, mm -hmm. you know, and I would go. Yeah. That's where the mad come in. Yeah. So the mad stunt man. Yeah, so like a combination. Combination, yeah. yeah. So let's talk about uh, the Real to Real project. Uh, for that one, you did work together with DJ producer Eric Morello. Uh, how did you and Eric uh, got to meet each other? I met Eric Morello through a friend of mine and a friend of his. His name is El General, um, El General, that the Spanish would say. Um, he's from Panama, and he's the first one to do the reggaeton flow of the Spanish, off of uh, dancehall music. He was the first one to ever done it you know and uh, he know a friend of mine that used to cut my hair at the time I used to get all my fancy hair cut back then and I used to sing on the streets so he would know that me singing on the streets and my friend um, told him about me and that's how I met El General El General introduced me to Eric he had a number he was like um, stunt man I have a number for you I want you to call this guy he's a producer and call him you know I didn't know his name at the time he was just call this guy Eric I think he said Eric you know call this guy he's a producer he used to travel with El General when El General was on tour so uh, when did the two of you decide to start working together we decided to work together when I made that phone call to New Jersey from Brooklyn I was to put like two dollars in coins in the phone booth these these we didn't had uh, cell phones you know, we had to run to the phone booth and put, put your money in there and call. And when I called Eric, he was like, I want you to come to the studio. I want to meet you. So he gave me the directions to New Jersey. I took the train from Brooklyn, took the bus from Manhattan and head to New Jersey. When I met Eric, he was in his mother's basement with a studio with a bunch of friends. And when I got there, um, they were playing dance music, house music. So I was like, man, I love this type of music. I want to do my style with this type of music. So he was like, really? 
go into the booth. Let me hear what you got. And I went to the, into the booth and I was rapping off of the uh, house music and I was sweating and it was like, come on out. I didn't want to come out the booth. He was like, come on out. I came out and it was like, we're going to work with you. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, um in 1992, the first reel-to-reel -reel track, the new anthem, came out, uh, which made it to the number one position of the Billboard Dance Club song chart straight away. Uh, that was a great start for the reel-to-reel -reel project, right? The reel-to-reel, -reel, the new anthem, like I came in around that time because the new anthem was El General's voice. That was El General. Oh. Yeah, not me. I, I, the time El General um, was not no longer with Eric, I took over. You know, in learning, trying to learn his words, what he was saying. And, you know, we would travel to clubs and different clubs and different venues. And I would be, you know, singing whatever song those songs were, you know, like Funky Buddha. That's El General's voice. Buddha, mm -hmm. that Funky Buddha. Boy, nice. Buddha, that Funky Buddha. <laughs> it, was, it was hilarious back then. So, uh, the biggest hit that Real to Real had so far is definitely I Like to Move It. Uh, is there still something you remember from the writing uh, process of that one? I Like to Move It, it was and is still the biggest song of uh, my life right now. Um, when we first recorded that song, we had did a Go On Move. And Go On Move was an underground track. It didn't really had a whole bunch of different like rapping, chanting lyrics, you know? It just had the uh, the, the, the hook line. Mm -hmm. Go on, move, make your body move. You know, it was that type of thing, you know? And then when, when, uh, when Eric made the track for I Like To Move It, at the time it wasn't I Like To Move It yet, cause he had made the track. And he was like telling me to go into the booth and try to come up with hooks. Just think of hooks and come up with hooks, you know? And in the studio, I would be like, uh, trying all type of different hooks and then I came on to I like to move it, move it, I like to move it, move it and keep repeating it. Eric was like, keep on repeating it, keep repeating it till we get the groove, you know? Then I would keep repeating, then he was like, you know what? You need to use that rough voice you did on the other song. Yeah, we call it the Cookie Monster voice. Use the Cookie Monster voice. And I was like, I like to move it, move it over and over. He said, keep doing it, keep doing it. And he would be behind the scenes taking the best parts of what I'm saying and created the hook. You know, and, and the reply of the hook, it was Eric and, and I think two other guys were like, move it. That's actually Eric's voice and someone else oh. saying, saying that, the answer back. And the verses, I already had the verses uh, like a reggae style, like a slow reggae style, woman, you're cute, you don't need no makeup. And I, and I had it in a song version and Eric said, you know, you don't have to sing it the whole song. You can repeat what you're saying. If you take certain parts of your song that you wrote already and just sing it repeatedly wherever you feel like you want to do it. And then I was adding different things to it, like all oh, girls all over the world. Because women is what I love, you know? And, and, and that's giving me the motivation to sing. That's how I like to move it came about. I like to move it is based on women, beautiful without any makeup. Because when you were young, when we were teenagers, me and my friends, we would go walking down Flatbush, Brooklyn, where I grew up, and we would be looking for girls, you know? And those teenage girls at the time, as us being teenagers, they wouldn't wear no makeup. They don't know nothing about no makeup or anything like that. Our parents would be wearing makeup when they go to work, you know? So I'd be like, woman, you're cute. You don't need no makeup. Original cute body, you will make man mud up. Mud up means crazy, oh wow. You don't need this. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. That's how I like to move it came about. Yeah, so the song is a bit like an, an ode to women. Yes, it's a, like an anthem song for women. <laughs> so uh, do you remember how long it took you to, to finish the lyrics? Actually, it took me like five minutes. Wow. Five minutes for that song. That's not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> not bad at all. Uh, so is it true that Eric asked you to do a more like the, the raspy voice? Like the, the, the cookie monster voice? Yes. Yeah. He likes that voice. He likes that voice a lot. So when we did I Like To Move It, I did it in two different voices. I did the, the, the hook in the deep voice. I like to move it, move it. And then I did the other uh, um, words. 
it, the the uh, verses in my regular voice. Oh, girls all over the world, woman you cute, and you don't need no makeup. I'm a cute body. You want make my mother woman you cute, and you don't need. For he tell me you can repeat your words. I was like, woman you cute, and <laughs> you know, just give it that swing and give it that move, and that's how it came about, you know. So it went like really quick, really quick, yeah, because I I could sing fast, you know, yeah. yeah. So uh, the, uh, the instrumental part that was like already done then, I guess? What? Yeah, he had already made that. He had made that. We, I think we were getting ready to travel to Europe. And before we travel, we would be in the studio all day and night in the studio. And he would just be making beats, making music. And, you know, I would be there just writing, writing, coming up with, you know, ideas of hooks with songs and everything like that. But uh, I like to move it. Took five minutes. Wow. Yeah. And that was your first release ever? first release of an actual song not just a hook but a hook with verses mm -hmm. that was my first record oh that was a good start <laughs> yes that was a good start yeah so can you tell a bit more about what happened uh, after when uh, i like to move it move it got released uh, i know it became like a big hit in the clubs but was it a radio hit straight away as well oh my god it were everywhere when we first heard that the song got picked up by a Positiva EMI, I think we were in Chicago. We were in Chicago doing, um, I think we were um, doing, um, promoting um, Go On Move and all the other stuff that Eric had. And I think Eric got a phone call stating that we had was to travel to England for two weeks. We had 22 shows Wow! in two weeks. And he was like, come on, we're going, we're going. I was happy, excited, you know. At that time, I wasn't, I didn't own the uh, that voice yet, the, the, the rough voice. Because when I used to sing it, it used to hurt my throat. I used to get ludens for my throat and everything, drink tea after singing. I like to move and then I would get hoarse and everything. But you can't tell me nothing now. I own that voice right yeah, yeah, now. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there wasn't really internet at that time, so how, how did you and Eric got updates about sales and, and chart positions? You know, I was more focused on going out there and performing. You know, Eric was more behind the scenes and he would, you know, he, Eric was also the manager at the time, you know, cause I guess he wanted to do that manager. Ain't no one could, could have managed better than him at that time, you know, because he wants to always make sure that everything is perfect when we go out there until he finds someone to, to manage, you know. Yeah. I will always writing, and focusing on going into the studio and writing and getting stuff done. So everything else on the charts, he would know everything about that, you know? But it was pretty good, you know? Seeing the song number one in certain countries and everything, like Holland. Yeah. I got my first award here in Amsterdam. Ah. My ever first plaque. Huh right here special place here for you special then. place you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah. Do, do you remember hearing i like to move it on, on the radio for the first time when i heard i like to move it on the first time in new york uh, i ran and told all my friends my song is playing on the radio you know they didn't believe you know until they heard it yeah. you know and when they hear it they was like oh man i'm happy for you you know you're gonna be you know yeah. Just good, just good words of confidence, yeah. you know? That must be so unreal to hear your first, your own track on the radio. For the yes, first time. yes, yeah. it was. I can hear it right now as you talk about it. I can hear it right now. I was so happy. Yeah. Very, very happy. We already said, like, I like the movie became a top 10 hit in lots of countries. And in some countries, it even made it to the number one position in the charts. Uh, did you expect that the track would become this big? You know, when we first recorded the track, we had no idea that it would have went so huge. All I can remember is going to every club and arena to perform, and I had was to get my hair done, my outfits done different. I had to come out looking like a stunt man, you know, because. When people hear my name, the, the, the stunt man, they would think I would really go and do a stunt. But I'm doing a stunt in the, when I start writing my lyrics, that's me doing a stunt. When I'm in the booth rapping, that's me doing a stunt. When I'm on stage singing for my fans, that's me doing a stunt. I don't have to jump off of a cliff mm -hmm. 
in order to be a stunt man you know a stunt man would do things that other people would not dare to do you know and i go into the booth and create stunts and here i am yeah so i guess the tv performances and live gigs all all, all started around that time as well yes everything was like just coming at us you know we would go to gigs in uh, clubs whether it's small venues the big venues we were there yeah. we were everywhere do you still remember your very first tv performance ever tv performance yeah i think my first tv performance was um i think canada i if i remember yeah. right i think it was canada yeah. on the word oh. the name of it was the word mm -hmm. But I think we traveled to, no, it has to be England because we went there first. Okay. We went there first. Mm. So I think it was MTV. I think we were on MTV right. first. And the time they were still playing music. Yes, yeah. because when we were traveling, we had was to do 22 shows plus TV. So it was England. England was the first wow. from there, everywhere else. Yeah. So do you have any idea how many copies of I Like To Move have been sold worldwide during all those years? <laughs> Back then in 1994, three million copies. Wow. Back then, and probably still growing, you know? But back then it was actually three million copies yeah. that sold, yeah. Yeah, because these days uh, the song is, yeah, it has been used in, in several TV series and movies, and uh, also new versions uh, appeared in, for example, Madagascar. Uh, do you remember what your reaction was when you found out they were gonna use your song in the movie? I did not, be I did not believe that they were, that my song were coming out in a movie you know, a cartoon. You know, I had was to see it to believe it because we grew up on cartoons like Woody Woodpecker, Bugs Bunny and all of that stuff, you know. And I actually went to see the uh, the movie and I was sitting in the audience, you know, no one no one know me, you know, I'm in the audience and I'm watching the movie and then the part came up where they went and they did like that. And the song, I saw King Julian start singing, I like the movie. My thing was, I was listening to King Julian, how he was singing the song. And the way how he came about the rest of the words, I mean, everyone could sing, I like to move it, move it. But when he starts singing the actual words, even though they switched up some of it to make it funny, I was amazed by him just catching the words. Mm -hmm. And he said it perfectly. And uh, Baron, Baron, Sasha Baron is the voice behind uh, King Julian. And for him to catch it, I was amazed. Yeah. I was happy. I was like, wow. I thought no one could have done it, you know, but they actually did it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, besides TV series and movies, uh, I like to move it also has been used in several video games and lots of commercials as well. For example, brands such as McDonald's, Jeep, Toyota, and even Durex use it in their commercials. Uh, which one is your favorite commercial? <laughs> My favorite commercial, oh man, um, let me see, it, it's so many, so many commercials they had. I love the Jeep commercial, I saw the Jeep commercial, I saw the McDonald commercial, I love them all. Yeah, yeah. I love them all. I'm not gonna say I love this one yeah, better exactly. than that one. Yeah. Well, I just love to hear my yeah. voice and where it, where, where it went, it was amazing to me. It's still amazing to me now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'm sure I, I Like To Move It has really changed your life. Uh, what is your personal highlight when it comes to the release of I Like To Move It? My personal highlight? <laughs> My personal highlight of the song. I mean, you know, when I started singing the song, I was pretty slim. When we did the video in, in New York, it was really cold that day. And I came out with my long short, you know, my long pants, my short, and it was so freezing. I mean, that was that was the great highlight because, you know, I didn't had on no coat. I just had on my gear. If you saw the video, mm -hmm. it was really cold. It was like 20 below. And that's like, I had to do it. If we had to do make a great video for the song, I had to do it. And I did my best on the video. And that was my personal highlight. Yeah. So uh, you're still touring uh, all around the world these days. Um, what, what is the funniest thing that ever happened during a show? Ah, <laughs> the funniest thing, I can give you some funny thing. The funniest thing ever happened to me was I was performing and I can't remember where this, this gig was, if it was in, uh, in Germany or France or wherever it was really big arena and I was performing and I came too close to, this, to the end of the stage and one of my feet went down. 
and and I mean the crowd they pushed me back up but it was like oh my god I hurt I hurt in my leg but oh. I kept on singing okay. you know so when I perform I I, I start look, yeah, <laughs> looking looking yeah, yeah. at the stage yeah but you, you, you did not fall no I did not fall over yeah, but yeah. it just one leg slipped and oh. I was like oh you know back then I'm slim so I had a lot of energy so I would just kick, um got up like really quick and then another another incident we were in Russia and we was in St. Petersburg, Russia. It was half a million people. Wow. I think it was the square, St. Petersburg Square. And they had half a million people. I was performing. I like to move it, move it. And we would see the the uh, the army coming in to, and they would hit the people, like react, you know, like they can't react. Like you're supposed to stand up and watch the show. So I had stopped but singing. And I was like, what's going on? Every time I sing and the people just running in, beating these people that's trying to have a good time. They was like, no, you keep doing what you're doing. They regular, they they used to that. So I just kept singing. People just kept getting beat up, taken away. Man, woman to the uh, the little paddy wagon they had. I didn't I didn't understand that, you know? But I kept on singing and, and those are so, so many memories. Yeah. Another incident happened at my road manager at the time, um, his name is Barry James. He lives in England. We were uh, somewhere overseas and that gig, I did not make the gig. And he was to perform because I were not there. And uh, the uh, promoters, they were like, um, where is stuntman? Where is stuntman? Why is not he? Why he's not here? You're gonna have to go and sing, you know. And he went because he had dreads too. He went on the stage to sing. My dancers were there and everything. And and when the song came out, he came out with the mic trying to uh, imitate me and everything. And he was so shocked by the fans and he dropped the microphone <laughs> on the stage and he, a fan, when he bent down like this to say uh, I, um, to touch the fan and one of the fans said you're not the mad stunt man <laughs> so he left there and he went to the other side of the stage you know that's a fun memory and he still has it he still has that footage I'm trying to get him to send me that footage so precious footage you know? Yeah, it must be funny. Yeah, yeah. Those are my memories of yeah. me performing. Yeah, I'm sure you can write a book about it. Definitely, yeah. definitely write a book. So uh, besides performing, what are you up to these days? These days I'm working on the Mad Stuntman project. Um, back then was Real to Real featuring the Mad Stuntman and right now is the Mad Stuntman. Um, um, over the years I've been working on albums, you know, producing myself producing myself and working with other producers from overseas. Like um, I did an album, it's called The Unleash of the Mad Stunt Man. Um, and I've worked with two producers from Switzerland, you know, and also I'm working with other new producers now. I'm also myself, I make sure anything that I do, I produce it myself and or produce it with, with someone else. You know, I, I just don't have a producer just producing and giving it to me. I want to make sure I have input yeah. in everything that's being done now to be out there, you know? It has to be good, it has to be it has to be proper. Yeah. Yeah. So what can we expect from the Matt Stoltman in the next few years? Few the hours? next few years, you can expect my brand new single is called It's Your Birthday. And it's a great birthday song. It's a new anthem birthday song. You're gonna love it from the kids from the teenagers, our age, older, everyone is gonna love it. And I also, two singles came up before, which is, uh, I did a song with Cutty Ranks. Are you familiar with Cutty Ranks? He also has that song called, um, Dame tu casita, oi, oi, dame tu casita. You ever read that song? It's a Spanish reggaeton song, and they use his voice in there. Yeah, Cutty Ranks, he's, he's a legend from Jamaica. He's known back in them days. I used to listen to him too. Mm -hmm. He's one of, also one of the artists I used to listen to with his vibes, just chanting and just chanting away. Yeah. And the last question, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Pineapple on pizza? Yes. Good. I love pineapple on pizza. I'll join the club. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time and good luck with everything. Thank you so much. Look out for the Mad Stuntman. I have new music coming with CNC Music Factory, which is Freedom Williams. Ah. We have new music coming together. Also a new artist, her name is Brenda O'Sullivan. You know, she's also an actress. And also I have a 
I'm working right now currently with Sissy Peniston. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. We're working on a really nice track. So what's the look out. Look out. Okay. I also have a song. It's called Put Down the Guns. It's for the teenagers that, you know, a lot of uh, killings yeah. going on and in different countries, you know, it's not just at, at your home, mm -hmm. but it's worldwide, you yeah. know, and we're trying to get that song out so everyone could, you know, put down the gun. Yeah, it's like a song with a message. Yes, a song with a message. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So look out for the mad stunt man. I'm coming. Uh, reality TV show is also in the works as well. So I'm going to be there. I'm working on my uh, my weight. I'm gonna take the uh, diet journey and you guys gonna see me for the future you're gonna see me looking really good we're gonna move it move it in a different style so instead of the mad stuntman it's gonna be the, the busy stuntman it's gonna be the mad busy stuntman and i want to thank my management my manager preston sullivan for doing a wonderful job okay yeah perfect well thank you very much thank you so much for having me all right, that was it, this week's vlog. My interview with Mark Quasi, AKA The Mad Stuntman, about the real to real classic, I like to move it. Mark, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and make sure to subscribe. Once again, thanks for watching, and until next time, bye bye.